Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back. We are going to be going over the uh, Chocolate Cafe Part 2. I uh, won't be talking too much about the gameplay in this episode. What I mostly wanted to talk about was the new update that was released. Uh, I think it's important that I talk about that. Uh, so let me pull it up here and get the patch, or get the, get the update notes. Uh, so first of all, trainer avatars can now be recustomized from the profile screen, which is really nice. Um, you can change the way your, your your character looks, all of that, which also opens it up for them to add more clothing, more customization, and all of that in the future. So that is a good update. I'm happy with that. Um, it doesn't. I, it's it's an up it's an updated thing that doesn't have any downsides. It's all pretty much positive, which is always uh, a good thing. Uh, is when they add stuff instead of take stuff out or restrict certain things. We'll get into that later in the video. Uh, but those can be customized by going into the profile screen, uh, which is clicking in the bottom left. You'll now also, is that in the patch notes? No, that's not. Also, now you can see how much XP you have gotten over the full lifetime of you playing. Uh, for example, mine says 510,127 XP. That's something that they don't say in the patch note, or I'm just going to call it patch notes because I'm going to end up calling it that. It's the update notes, but you can now do that by clicking. You'll see the three lines in the bottom right. Uh, you can now click that, and there's an option for your journal, and there's also an option for custom customizing, which takes you to a screen that looks similar to the very uh, first screen you get when you edit your character. Uh, second, we have adjust some Pokemon battle move damage values. Uh, from what I know, I know Gyarados got a buff, and I believe Snorlax got a buff. I don't really think Snorlax needed a buff, but he got a buff. And I know they nerfed Vaporeon. Uh, those are the only three that I'm fully aware of that they've done. Uh, there's probably a few more, and there's probably a few that make no difference. You're still not going to use that or want that Pokemon on your six on your six Pokemon team. Uh, but other than Vaporeon, Gyarados, and Snorlax, I don't know any exactly of the other Pokemon that may have been nerfed, buffed, or changed. Uh, Revine certain gym animations. Uh, if you don't update, I hadn't updated yet and I challenged a gym, it loads in really slow. You can still attack, but you're like attacking nothing. Nothing is on your screen for the initial thing. So I'm hoping that's not how it works if you're updated. I'm hoping that's just because I hadn't updated yet. And uh, I updated when I got home after I'd been out for the day doing a couple of different stuff and recording another video. Uh, hopefully that is not... Um, the case now that it kind of loads in slow and it's a little bit it's a little bit laggy it's a lot harder to dodge i'm hoping that is just because i was out and wasn't updated yet uh, so i'm going to give them the benefit of the, of the doubt on that one let me know uh if that's how it's working for you guys with the update i'm going to be challenging some gyms tomorrow so i will have a definitive thing uh I'll have a definitive answer that maybe I'll discuss in the next, because we still got another chocolate cafe, which is more of me just discussing different things with you guys. Uh, next uh, was improved memory issues, or improved memory issues. Now, I don't know of any of the memory issues that people may have been having. Maybe I haven't had any memory issues. Um, I can go ahead and take a look here and see how much uh, storage it's taking up. Actually, how do you look at that? There we go. Storage and iCloud usage. And storage. And yeah, see, I'm using only 6.8. Pokemon Go only takes up 221 megabytes of data. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what the whole memory thing uh, is all about. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, what what needed to be fixed there but if people are having problems with that obviously it's good that they got that fixed for them um i'll get on to the next one near the end because i got a rant about it uh, adjusted battle damage calculation um i'm going to assume that has something to do with the multipliers uh that that you get for a super effective and not very effective because um adjusted some pokemon battle move damage values seems 
vaguely similar to adjusted battle damage calculation. So I have to assume that with the calculation that has to do with the boost, the multiplier, or the the multipliers for whether it's uh, super effective, not effective. Um, I'm assuming maybe they added if it was super effective for two types. Uh, that's kind of rare, but there are there are some Pokemon that are the two types that have something uh, that's super effective against them, like a grass flying type. Ice is super effective against uh, that type of Pokemon, double super effective. Uh, various bug fixes during wild Pokemon encounters. I'm going to assume this is a good fix. This has to do with, I assume, the Pokeball freezing, whether it freezes close up or the newer glitch that's been happening is when it freezes up and the Pokeball is really far away and it's really small. I had that happen a decent chunk of time. Uh, and that's one of the more annoying uh, glitches in the game is when it gets really small because I don't think I ever got any of my Pokemon then. If it's bigger, if it's like zoomed in and it's at the screen where it's getting ready to swivel back and forth, I usually get the Pokemon. Uh, also, I assume another fix that we got with that would be when you, if you had a notification at the top of your iPhone and you pulled it down to read it and then you swiped it back up to get rid of it, uh, the Pokeball would move to the top left corner and get stuck there. So hopefully that's one of the fixes that this, um, that this solved. Uh, and there were a couple of glitches where it would spawn you in water and it would just all be water and nothing else would load. Uh, but it would still like track where you were walking. Uh, so that was kind of a weird glitch. It happened very rarely and it mostly happened when you fired it up and you just had to close it and reopen it. Uh, next is updated Pokemon details in the user interface. Um, I actually don't really see any changes for this. Like, I don't know what Pokemon details got updated in the interface because I don't see any new. I don't see anything new in the user interface. Uh, unless it applies, I guess that might apply it. There's now the little three bar thing that I talked about earlier with the customization of your character. That's now there for Pokemon and that's where the favorite and transfer option is. I kind of like that they did the transfer option that way because it saves people from accidentally transferring. Um, or tra it, 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 People still transfer out of habit because so do I. I almost transferred my Pokemon right now by accident by... Just, just hitting transfer and I was like, oh yeah, hit transfer again. Um, but that's kind of a nice fix. It's kind of annoying because it blocks certain things on your view. Also, since the update, the Google Maps feature thing isn't working. So now the map, you know how it used to show under your Pokemon where you caught them? Uh, like it would show the street and a, like an overhead view from Google Maps. It's not loading those anymore. So that's kind of annoying. If, if it's not going to load, that's a feature they could take out, I guess. Uh, and I wouldn't be too mad. Uh, but now it's just a blank, blank white screen under every Pokemon for me. So that's a problem with the update. Uh, here we go. Uh, updated achievement medals. Uh, medal art. Uh, this isn't too much, too big of a deal to me. Mostly because the medals don't get you anything. They don't get you pokey coins. They don't like get you XP. They really don't do anything of significant value except like give you a medal that you can see in your uh, player customization area or your player stats area. Uh, other than that, they they don't serve a point. They don't give you they don't give you uh, any rewards for them. They don't give you any experience. They don't give you any. Uh, uh, Pokey coins, uh, not that I've seen. I don't think they give you experience. Um, so that's one of those things where it's not really too big of a deal for me, the achievement medals are. Now, I will say they do look a little bit cooler now, uh, except a lot of them are still just the gold circle and the white circle and all that different stuff. But they did add a few different uh, icons, nothing of too much note there. Uh, minor text fixes. I have no idea what this is. Uh, they did change the font that they use for your Pokemon. It's now in like a bold type looking thing. Um, I don't really know if that was all that necessary, but they did do that. 
I don't think that's all the minor text fixes they make they made, but that would be some of the changes that they made overall. All right, so here we go with the biggest thing of the day, the thing that I wanted to talk about the most with you guys, and that is the removal of the footprints of nearby Pokemon. This is not a good thing. Was definitely hoping, you know, that they would not remove those and that we would uh, get them. Hopefully, you know, all me in particular is really hoping that they just remove this for a limited time and then next update, or I guess I'll give them two updates to put it back in the game before I really go off and am pissed. But it literally. It ruins a part. It makes their app like a fourth worse than it than it than it is. If they if it had it, I like it about 75% more or 75% um, without the, without the uh, the footprints. The footprints make it fun. I know PokeVision is a thing, but I shouldn't have to use a third party app to find Pokemon in the app. Like it, it just doesn't make any sense. I shouldn't have to keep switching back and forth between PokeVision to find these Pokemon. And PokeVision also doesn't display every single Pokemon around you. At my house, things pop up all the time and they're not on PokeVision. So PokeVision isn't the end-all be-all. It's not going to show every Pokemon, unlike your phone does, because your phone tells you when there's Pokemon nearby. Also, the... Uh, the nearby, I don't even think it's, unless they fixed it, it used to not even be in order since they turned off the, re, the footprints. It wasn't even in order of what was closest. So you were in a crapshoot on what you were trying to find. You didn't know how far away it was. You can't even judge it anymore how far away it is uh, because now you can't even tell anymore what exactly because there even though a pokemon's not on your list they can just pop up so sometimes you get the stuff booted on and off your nearby list like right now i have three Raditas, two pidgeys three weedles and an eevee okay if something spawns right next to me okay and it was not one of those pokemon it doesn't appear on the nearby list if they don't fix that then if you're if you have your nearby screen open up which you do sometimes and you're moving you could easily miss pokemon because they're not popping up in your nearby when the game first came out as soon as a pokemon popped in from incense lure anything it showed up on the nearby list as the first pokemon because it's closest to you uh it no longer does that anymore nothing shows up for that pokemon when it spawns right next to you uh, now I could see, you know, the point is it's right next to you. You should see it. You shouldn't need the nearby list for that. But having it on the nearby list was nice because if you were moving, like if you were on a bike or in a car or like on a boat, um, it would pop up on the nearby list if you were inside the nearby list and then you could exit out quick and tap on it to, to initiate the battle. You can't do that anymore because you don't know... You don't know it if it appears, so when you're in a vehicle, it makes it ten times harder to catch Pokemon that way. And I just don't like the fact that we have so many third-party apps that we have to use for this game. I get the Pokiness because I guess they're supposed to be secret hidden areas. You know, we've got nests here that spawn Pokemon, which is supposedly removed. Uh, there's no confirmation 100%, but I did go to a, a magmar nest that was supposed to be in this area, and it didn't spit out any magmars. I got one Electabuzz, and uh, one Electabuzz appeared on my thing, but I couldn't find it. Uh, so it either switched to an Electabuzz spawn, or nests aren't a thing anymore. That could have been something fixed in this, or taken out in this patch, but we shouldn't need... The Poking Nest app, is, or the... I'm just going to call them app. They're on the internet. They're not really apps, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay. The Pokey... It, it, the Pokey um, Nest... It's not even an app. It's just someone put it together. Uh, and they're not even all 100% confirmed. Most of them are true, but a couple of them I know aren't accurate. Because there's one 
in my area for a scyther and i've checked it like four times there's never a scyther there so it's it's not it's actually at that park where i record some of my videos that's supposed to be a scyther spawn there's no scythers on the anywhere like i've ran around that i've drove around that park so many times no scyther has ever popped up so i know that one's not true and i know a few others aren't true because i've seen people say you know that one there's nothing there or something like that along those lines of it's not there uh but the pokiness that's that's the most reasonable thing that they don't need to end the game i'm okay if i have to go look up a pokiness pokey vision while those guys do a great job of what they do with that uh web app it's not perfect uh by any means and like i said earlier I shouldn't have to use it in order to find Pokemon, but you need it. You have to do it. Otherwise, you kind of get like left in the dust, kind of. You've got to, you got to kind of use it, and it really only is super effective in the big cities. It's not as effective in uh, in rural areas or uh, out in, in the middle of nowhere. Which I really want to do a video talking about that, those two things because. It's kind of dis it's disheartening as a Pokemon Go player if you don't live in a populated area, if you don't have Poke Stops, if you don't have any gyms. It really limits what fun you can have with this app because you're literally limited to running around trying to find anything because you can't even lure up anything. So that's that that's kind of let me move on from that topic because I probably visit it here in the future, but. My final like closing thoughts, I guess, about these patch notes, and I'll give a final closing thought about the most important thing. So most of the things they did fix in this patch were really good. Um, they were things that didn't necessarily need to be done, but like the customization, that kind of uh, lends to uh, more outfits and more customization in the future. Uh, which is nice. Uh, not sure they needed to roll that update out now, but I'll take it over never getting it, so they can roll it out and always tweak it in the future. Um, there were a lot of small fixes that weren't too important. Uh, there were also some battle glitches fixed and battle damages buffed and nerfed and all of that different stuff, which is good for overall gameplay and overall uh, longevity of the game because Vaporeons just dominate everything right now. I think they were the biggest thing in need of a nerf or a buff. I think Onyx could use a little bit of a buff. He's just so useless that I think he could use a buff. Uh, then uh, the the damage calculations, which I have to assume is multipliers. I don't really know what else that could be. Um, so I'm going to assume that's multipliers. That's nice. Um, make sure that you're doing the correct amount of damage and not doing way too much or way too little for what move and what uh, type and everything uh, that you were using. Uh, next was the uh, fixes to text. I don't really have anything to comment about those because that's not that's not important. The text, I'd rather have them, you know, get the three steps back, the one, two, three steps, and then, oh, it's there instead of this you know we're just gonna get rid of it uh and then they updated pokemon details unit unit user interface which i don't really know exactly what they did with that uh but that was most of the there's just a lot of small fixes and then there were there's a couple of majors like the recus that you can recustomize your character and the removal of the footprints of nearby pokemon so let me finish off by just saying it disappoints me. I know it'll disappoint a lot of people too that we no longer have the three steps for now. But people, we we all can stop calling it the three step glitch because they just took it out. They just took the axe to it instead of fixing it. It's been a thing for like two weeks, hasn't it? It's been at least two weeks. I feel like since we had this three, the three step thing became a thing pretty quickly after the game launch. And honestly, all the opinions that they did it to ease stress on their servers is the most likely thing but you would think instead of removing it and just being like well our servers can't handle this that in two weeks they could fix it you know or at least put out a statement about it they haven't even addressed it they never addressed it they, they addressed it a lot of issues in the beginning 
Uh, but now they're just ignoring most of their issues. They don't address anybody on Twitter. I think the Poke Niantic hasn't tweeted for like eight days. And the Pokemon Go app is just... It, it doesn't talk about anything important. Here's a Magnemite that I'm going to catch here that was a little bit different. I hadn't caught a Magnemite before. Or, yeah, I hadn't caught a Magnemite before I hatched it. Uh... So this was a pretty nice find. I had a couple of have the nice finds near the end of these episodes, which is which is nice. I'm happy about that. Uh, but pretty much that's gonna do it, guys. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the patch and especially the customization, the being able to recustomize your character. Let me know if you guys think it'll open doors to uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Open doors to more clothing and more customizations to be added in the future. And finally, the most important thing, which is the removal of three of the footprints. Just the removal of all, not just three steps, all of them. The removal of everything, which is just really disappointing. Uh, I'm praying that they they get they put it back out there because that it's half the fun of the app, you know, going out, being a Pokemon trainer, walking around, you know. Oh, a Squirtle popped up on my thing. Let me go find him. I should be able to, you know walk around and and find him uh that should be you know a, a, a thing i think you should be able to do that but guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh drop it a like if you did uh subscribe if you haven't and i think i'll catch you all in the next video guys peace out